Dear class, Dr. Diazio here. I'm happy to share some exciting news. When you think of inventions that have changed the world we live in, and world-changing innovations, you might think of things like the sailboat, which was created in 6000 BC, Mesopotamia, and it first allowed us to sail and trade and transport. You might even think of the wheel. Yeah, we have bicycles and cars, and that was created in 4000 BC, which revolutionized transportation and the movement of resources. Others might argue that the invention of that nail, a nail, which is from ancient Egypt, 3400 BC, that spurred carpentry and construction, the houses, the schools that we work and live in, we might even say soap. The invention of soap, again in Mesopotamia in 2800 BC, is very important. Hopefully you use soap. I use soap today. What did that do? That spurred hygiene and sanitation improvements. Or many others might argue that it is paper, which was invented in China in 105 BC, that allowed us to share our knowledge. Think of the Bible, Quran, Torah, all these other books that we read, our book, maybe, maybe, maybe our book, and help us keep more effective record keeping. But today we hear almost endlessly about the great innovative and magnificent feats of entrepreneurs and innovators here in the US or California and Silicon Valley. Yes, tech giants driving innovation changing the world we live in, uh, allowing us to adapt to the new norm. We worship these products that these innovative companies such as Facebook, Google, Apple, Amazon create and produce that consume our lives, become addicted to them endlessly. So with our heads down, our hands clutched together, not with a rosary or a mala, but a sacred device that we share personal and intimate information. Even as we sit here and take this class, we are staring in front of a digital oracle, paying homage to these organizational gods that we frame these companies that we worship and buy their product and addicted to their product. We hope, we wish, and pray even for the answers that we get through, through their devices and the questions that we ask them utilizing these sacred devices. However, what you may not know is we are standing on the shoulders of giants. Yes, here in the Tampa Bay, St. Pete area, there are people who have walked before us that have changed and shaped the world we live in. And we are a part of that. I don't know if it's in the air, the humidity, the water, salty water, the sand beneath our feet, but it's here. It's in our DNA in the region. And I want to share with you about those inventors, innovators, that have changed the world, that are from here, our hometown, our place, and what we can learn and what we're carrying on because of these giants. These aren't tech giants. These aren't religious fanatics. These aren't scientists from our area, but influencers who have roamed St. Pete in the community and changed how we live. Yes, that's right. Many world-changing innovations happened here. And what you may not be aware of, they've influenced the products we use today, the services we engage with, the industries, and they've, insp they've inspired today. The influence of St. Pete in the Tampa Bay area cannot be overstated. For instance, to quote Jimmy Wales, founder of Wikipedia, he says, quote, imagine a world in which every single person has access 
to all the knowledge or human knowledge of the world. That's what we're doing here. That's what we're doing in St. Pete. Yes, that's right. Wikipedia was founded in downtown St. Pete. In 2003, Wales created the Wikimedia Foundation, which housed the non-for-profit wikipedia.org. Today, Wikipedia and its sister organizations are always the top five most visited websites on the internet. Yes, that happened here locally. Today, if you guys know downtown St. Pete or even what's happened in downtown Tampa, we can see these as growing, bustling cities and stature. But imagine if this was the 1900s. At that time, there was no bridge between St. Pete and Tampa, and it took seven to nine hours by automobile to go from St. Pete to Tampa or Tampa to St. Pete, and 68 hours by train, until a visionary from St. Pete bankrolled the first commercial air flight. Yes, that first commercial air flight happened here. On January 1st, 1914, just a short walk from USF in St. Pete, Tony Janis flew the first commercial air flight and the first passenger who paid for their ticket, which was the mayor at that time, from St. Pete to Davis Island, which took 22 minutes. This revolutionized, jumped the curve, jumped the shark, if you know what I'm talking about. Creating an industry that didn't exist. The airline industry. Billions of dollars worth now and billions of passengers yearly fly commercial airlines. And this was the brainchild of Florida businessman Percival Fanzler, who came up with the idea, said, hey, why can't we move people and cargo from point to point on a set schedule like we do the railroad industry? So he took the idea from one and applied it to another. We can also think about another innovation that has happened here in St. Pete that has influenced how we live and how we buy our products. Webas. City cut rate drugstore, a modern day Amazon and even Amazon Prime strategy, form of an Erling shopping mall. Yes, those things existed. Not sure for how much longer, though. So, founded in 1926, James Earl Doc Webb created Web City, which was labeled the world's most unusual drugstore here in St. Pete world's most unusual drugstore. He used gimmicks to attract people to come to his store. Not so different than Amazon Prime. He would sell a dollar for 95 cents and tell, it, tell you to come back tomorrow and I will buy it for a dollar ten. Ways to get people in the door so they spent more money. He was selling underwear in the grocery department and canned foods in the clothing department. Stack them high and sell them cheap was his marketing model and sales approach. Not so different than Amazon today. And he would undercut prices by 10% of its competitors. He even had dancing chickens and kissing bunnies. In fact, I know someone from my Toastmasters club who used to sell those bunnies to Doc, Doc Webb at, for Webb City. And he verified that. So in its heyday, to give you a size of how big it was, it was 70 stores in a seven block radius in downtown St. Pete. If you know where the TROP is, it's right before the TROP. It was $30 million a year in business and on average 60,000 customers a day. And they were served by 1,200 employees. Kind of gives you the scale. And we're talking about something that started in 1926. Not only was he innovative in his approach to selling and marketing, but he was also a pioneer in social change and social innovation. At a time where businesses during the Jim Crow law weren't hiring African Americans or from the African American community, Web City was regularly hiring African Americans and leading change in the civil rights and access to jobs and fairness and equality. And this is something that we in the local area 
should reflect upon and see how we can continue this tradition. So no doubt there are many examples to be made and many other examples to be made about how innovations and inventors locally have changed the world we live in. And these are just a few. But I want to suggest that when you hear about change, and we hear that word a lot, when we hear about change, when we hear about invention, when we hear about innovation, we want to think about St. Pete and the Tampa Bay area. About the giants who have walked before us and the influencers and change makers that walk among us. So think of innovation, St. Pete and the Tampa Bay community.